Uh, hello, we are group number six. Uh, first and foremost, I want to apologize for being late. <coughs> that was uh, my fault, my fault alone. Uh, all my group members were here on time. Don't punish them, punish me. Uh, yeah, we are group number six. Uh, I'm Tom, this is Woody, that's Helen, Lana, and uh, Daniel. So, again, we are talking about the uh, Harvard Business Review article entitled, uh, Winning the Race for Talent in Emerging Markets. So, unprecedentedly, for the first time, uh, in my knowledge, um, businesses are in a heated competition, not for customers, but for uh, employees. Uh, prospective employees uh, have numerous options with regards to who they can work for. Uh, even the most established companies are having trouble finding the right employees. Uh, the right employees being competent, diligent, and effective staff. So the issue here is how companies meet that demand, uh, their staffing needs. So hiring people can be easy. You can go down to the street and give any schmuck some money and he'll come work for you. Uh, but it's difficult to hire the right person for the right job. So any organization who does not have um, the right type of staff will not be successful. So this typically involves higher level employment, um, employment that demands more responsibility and a greater impact on overall decision making. So as you can see here, the demand for these types of employees, these diligent, competent, and effective types of employees is in excess. There's a high demand and there is a lack of supply. Uh, and more specifically, we'll talk about in what areas there is a lack of supply. Um, so how does an organization ensure that they hire the right people? Well, if done right, the process can be extensive. Um, but a company does not just want to jump the gun and hire anyone before adequately uh, vetting them. Now, this word vetting, we typically hear in... Uh, political circles, uh, to vet somebody means to um, dig deep into their personal history, their employment history, their past, um, their backgrounds are looked into excessively, and the decision is made whether or not they're uh, an adequate fit. So they are critically reviewed in terms of what they've done, where they've gone, etc. So the same process can be done for employees. And if a position is important enough, there are usually several levels of interviews. There are personality tests. Um, numerous references are contacted. And even in some cases, employees are administered drug tests. And if you fail a drug test, no matter how qualified you are for a position, you will not be hired. So every detail of a person's character is investigated to better understand whether or not they will fit in with the company's goals, cultures, etc. So, here we spotlight who this uh, article specifically uh, talks about. Uh, who are the major players? So, in the developing world, the major players are Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Um, in the article, it said that the economic activity of these regions was growing at 40%. That article was published in 2008. So I went ahead and found more relevant data. Um, so you can see here from 2004 all the way to 2012, the, this graph illustrates the GDP growth from the previous year of all four uh, economies. So in 2012, China grew by 7.8%, Brazil grew by 0.9%, India by 3.2%, and Russia by 3.4%. So these are the major economic players within the world. And in comparison to the West and Japan, uh, America's GDP growth was 2.2, mm. Canada's was 1.7, <laughs> uh, Germany's was 0.7, the United Kingdom was 0.3, and France, oddly enough, had a 0% GDP growth rate. Uh, and just in contrast, Japan was 1.9%. Mm. So this just illustrates again where the economic growth is happening and why it's important for these nations to uh, hire effective employees to maintain this economic growth. Mm. Very good energy, yeah? Mm. So this was a, uh, a graph from the article itself. 
which details the types of employment, employment positions that are available in each country, and it illustrates entry level or uh, immediate employment is at a surplus in Brazil, so there's more employers or employees available than there are positions. However, as we move up with regards to higher level employment, that uh, surplus turns into a deficit. Uh, the same can be said in Russia where the overall employment um, options are in a deficit as well. And here we see India again at the, at the bottom level, deficit in China, it's a huge deficit and again as we move up towards higher level employment, middle management, leadership, there is a, um, there is a surplus. So. Um, what we often see is what we often see is an exportation of talent. So Western countries and those whose economies are not growing necessarily as fast as developing nations have a much more rich talent pool of prospective employees. So you see expats working and moving towards these developing nations who are offering higher level employment than they would otherwise see in their home countries. And this devalues local talent. This, um, this allows for a little room for advancement if higher level management positions are being filled by expatriates from other nations. And so local talent can be stuck occupying entry level or direct employment positions. So the goal of this article was to identify the dilemma and uh, impact necessary changes. Developing countries want to see this trend change Therefore, fostering local talent is important to national economic growth. And now I'm going to pass it on to Woody, who is going to talk about promises made. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, hello, everyone. So, um, as you know, uh, the one of the most yeah, national any company in the world is uh, uh, attracting talent working for a uh, company. And uh, how, how, do you, how do you get, get the promise made? Promise is a combination of brand opportunities and the purpose. So what is the brand opportunity purpose? Brands, you know, uh, as you know, uh, in the world, uh, the candidates are willing to pay, uh, willing to work for an organization known by this brand, uh, which offers some uh, is better, better conditions, uh, better salaries, uh, and uh, <coughs> and better career. And then so. Uh, so we're working for a strong brand company, so uh, the, the candidate employees have has a reputation for excellence because of, because they have to they have to prove that they're the best candidates among other people. And then besides with a with a strong brand, uh, the, the the organization of companies uh, is not limited by this uh, recruiting budget because. Uh, is uh, because the, the employees is becoming the, the uh, re recruiter for the uh, organization. And then next is, um, I'm, I'm going to talk about the purpose. Uh, the purpose is all companies in the world would like to be the, a, a great company in, in, the, in their countries or even the world. So, uh, so we become a great company means that uh, Means that they, they have opportunity to uh, they have opportunity to, to be a part of a uh, game training business model and the chance to participate in cultural transformation. Uh, it's besides this, uh, this also bring some other benefits. This is uh, related to the brand. And then this next is opportunity. As opportunity, so as you know nowadays, uh, all employees are looking for a defined uh, career path, and then. Uh, if a, a company uh, is not defined for them, they have to they have to find by themselves uh, by moving by moving uh, another company, and then so therefore uh, the company has to uh, define have to uh, show some 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 procedure some procedures some policies uh, to keep uh, uh, employees excited with the future the company, and in the next part uh, I. I will give some uh, examples in, in the real world. The first one is Lenovo. Uh, Lenovo is a, is a good education of uh, strong uh, brand uh, opportunity and purpose. Uh, as you know, in, in 2005, 
the the I the IDM acquisition made Lenovo is the is the third is the third largest uh, personal computer in the world. And then so and uh, but, uh, this also pushes some uh, effect for companies and uh, China uh, Chinese people uh, feel very proud about the uh, uh, Lenovo. Uh, and besides, so uh, is a uh, Lenovo the uh, Lenovo brand uh, was any uh, attractive to uh, young people? Uh, they, they, with with their dream, it's not only build not only find a job but also build a career for themselves. And uh, uh, another example is the DCS DCS, which is division of Tata Group in India. Um, is a uh, uh, Tata Group. The Tabu or DCS is provide some software and technology services to clients in uh, Latin, uh, Latin America, Spain, or Portugal. So when companies uh, expand into expand to uh, Brazil or and Uruguay, many many uh, Uruguay engineers uh, work for DCS in Brazil. So what is the, what's their motivation? If the answer is uh, the answer is that the combination of brand and opportunity, because uh, the Tata Group is stand for the uh, technical excellence, so the people is very proud when when working for DCS, and then uh, they they also feel that uh, they they were contributing uh, their uh, economic development country, uh, and then. Uh, Okay. And then the final exam, uh, I would like to talk about the standard standard chartered bank. As you know, uh, standard chartered bank is one of the biggest and well bank in the world. Uh, there are many uh, branches with many talents. So as uh, as their CEO uh, Peter Sand says that uh, they are leaders in uh, micro finance. So this this means that uh, their their leader is very very confident in their branch, which is very very strong. And many many people would like to work for uh, Standard Chartered Bank, and then uh, they also uh, and they also have some policy to support the uh, family uh, entrepreneurs uh, in some of uh, the poorest part in, in the world. So it means that uh, their call, their employees they have many many chances to to, to improve themselves uh, and so as to contribute the success to the success in the future, and then so. Uh, they have had many, many uh, the procedures. Uh, so, of course, the top talents are attracted because they know that they are the center in the uh, standard chartered mission in the future. So, this is my, this is all my, my presentation. And in the next part, there is a public chat. And we now will this. Thank you. Yeah, very good explanation. going to talk about return talent primary skill. First, I will show you an advertisement on television. Uh, this advertisement was run by HD a one year ago, mm -hmm. and I use this video to attract potential employees. Oh, 
Oh. And protectors. Oh. The girl you will fall in love with. The graveyard shift veterans. Even chief executives. Actors. Spot boys. Master chefs. And waitresses. Waitress. Truth is, we are all employees, putting our names on ideas that shape our world. Truth is, every employee is a hero. Enough said. Let's go do what we all do best. Let's go to work. <laughs> Why are you watching this advertisement? Have you thought about what company do you want to join? And that's my topic, Promise Gift. Why Promise Gift is so important in emerging markets? Because employees can quickly and easily move to global competitors or local companies that appear to offer greater overall rewards. And there are four, uh, there are four factors play a role in all aspects of that challenge and your process. There are brand, opportunity, purpose, and the culture. But the most important is culture. Many people living in developing countries are thinking of a culture that could support the promise of a um, career path with growth opportunities for everyone, a uh, common remedy or more with and cultural career plan. And next, we will introduce a specific cast, HCL. And HCL is the largest IT company in India. And this guy is uh, the company's CEO, and he defined the conventional Western that company must. Uh, must put customer first, then turn the uh, hierarchy, period, your outset down by marketing manager accountable to the employee, and not other uh, way around. By doing so, Mara follow the uh, imagination of both employee and customer, and set the HCL on a journal of transformation that has been into one of the better grown and uh, profitable global IT service companies. And uh, this is how uh, it's due for the company. Um, by we can see uh, the first he put employee first. It's not like uh, most company because most company they will I think a uh, customer is the most important. But this company, uh, he put the employee at first. And, and he, uh, he, in this company, he used a slogan, employee first and customer second. And I think uh, this policy is very successful. And this is the book uh, because his is very, is very successful, so he write out his idea and public it. And and uh, I think uh, the global companies uh, such as Standard Chart Bank, HCL, and uh, the Novel, the company's culture and the powerful metric to employees are your potential is limited only by your uh, the dedication, effort, and the ability to to produce results. And I think uh, the tech leadership development and uh, invested heavily in career planning and uh, professional development as the most uh, important factor. Mm -hmm. And that's to have it. Yeah, thank you. Do you know? example who hired the right person in China, which is uh, Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, actually, when 
the wrong type of uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when uh, Ben first uh, went to China, they faced a the problem that it's hard for them to hire the right and qualified employees. Because they found that it's hard for them to find a qualified senior leader in China. Instead, they find lots of unqualified university graduates. They are lacking of English skills and other skills. So there is a gap, a wide gap between employee supply and demand. And another problem is that the salary in China has risen out of proportion to the expertise of the talent pool. Because there are so many competitors in China, and many companies are willing to pay higher to, ride, uh, to hire the qualified employees. So it's kind of all of the control for them to hire the uh, employee with a reasonable salary. So when it comes to the uh, unrealistic expectation of salary of employees. And the third problem is very unique for China because we all know that there is a one child policy in China, which means that there can only have one child in the family. But what, uh, what problems should this affect the uh, recruitment in China? Because of the, this policy, child are lacking uh, people skills. They don't know how to uh, deal with problems with people. So when they hire the young people into the company, they found that it's hard to give them critical feedbacks or tell them what to do or not to do. And uh, SCV, they found uh, some solution to deal with the recruitment problem in China. And the first solution is that they tell SCB story with passion. They tell the passion, sense of purpose, strength, and uh, opportunities that young people will get what they want in the company. And the most important thing is that they have to uh, make sure that the culture and the management practices match the story in an honest way which means that they have to keep their promise or the employees will uh, no longer believe in them and walk away. And the second uh, solution is that the Royal Tower Superhighway for SCV China, they construct a superhighway to uh, foster their own qualified employees. And the first step is the selection. They do a very strict selection to hire um, qualified and skilled employees. They even pay higher salaries for employees in other fields like travel and tourism. Because why these two fields? Because they think that people in these two fields are good at uh, customer services, and which they need is for customer service in the financial service. So they uh, pay higher salary for employees in these two fields. And then induction and orientation. They have a standard induction program in SCB, and they introduce uh, recruits to the company's culture and the values that teaches them the ethical management of financial services, including money laundry, uh, prevention, and codes of conduct. And the third is technical training. There is so-called uh, boot camp, a special boot camp in SCB. It's a, it takes five days. And it trains on um, customer um, skills, customer relation skills to employees. And they have to pass the test after five days. And they can be assigned to uh, banks to serve their customers. And the fourth is professional and manage management development. They have intense training in English, communication skills, listening skills, and a business ethic. Uh, they also win a great uh, best practice award in China. Um, yeah. And they have some uh, internet learning system online, so their employees can learn online wherever they are. And the fifth one is strict assignment and deployment. It uh, always goes from go place, which means that the employees can go ahead in their career and they can get many chance to be assigned a role. 
the last one is personal development and performance management. They have a sound coaching and guidance system in the SCB, and the mentors will help the employees deal with problems openly and honestly, and lead to creation of an authentic and uh, trust-based culture. And then in SCB, the young employees can look up to uh, senior employees and uh, see what they do, and they can see their future in them. So they can trust the company and uh, work hard and uh, fulfill their dreams in the bank. So there's a sentence in article, in emerging economics, companies have no choice but to nurture local talent. And the most bright young recruits want to see others like them in position of power, which gives the hopes to young employees to stay in the bank as long as possible. Okay, so come to a conclusion. Thank you, Helen. So, um, due to events that we ended up going second, our presentation went from kind of being introduction to conclusion. So I decided my conclusion here, maybe a thoughtful execution and summary of what we've talked about, maybe open it up to some sorts of opinions, because we've all read about many of these things in the news. But as we mentioned, these, these three or four companies are becoming immensely famous. Many companies around the world have adopted the way that these companies have done things and shine or shown above the rest. So first, thoughtful execution. Uh, beware of exporting domestic talent strategy to emerging markets. We've all seen failure when a company, say an American company, moves into a Chinese market and they try to do the exact same thing that they did at home. It's, it's bound for failure. We're missing culture. We're missing work norms. It's, uh, so just beware of this. Um, core, core of local talent that can guide you to understanding the region. If your company has been there for a while and you're a foreign company, it's okay to keep your vetted expats in this area, but beware to not get rid of local talent and send them elsewhere because these local talent are going to guide your new expats into um, proper business scope, I guess I would say. Um, keep in mind that over-reliance on English as a foreign language, um, if you over-rely on English, you're missing out on many of your local staff that could be brilliant they just don't speak English. And the same could be true here. Don't pass up on your English speakers for jobs because they don't speak Chinese. <laughs> and uh, nurture local talent. Uh, bright young individuals that want, to be, um, that want to be like them in positions of power. A merit-based system versus a, I hate this word, hierarchical, hierarchical system based on family connections, relationships, social status, age, and length of tenure. In, especially in Asian markets, especially in China, they, they, the business structure is based on hierarchy. And now that they're seeing merit-based, they're willing to give more of a social contract to the company. They're putting more emphasis into it. They're willing to work harder because they know that just because their family's not rich, just because their family's not in the Communist Party, now they can move ahead with this foreign company. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned in our conclusion, maybe open it up to a bit of summary. Um, as global companies are well aware, winning the race for talent in emerging markets, it's hard work. Many companies fail, many companies are prospering. But as I mentioned, some of these companies rose above. I know my experience with Walt Disney, uh, Walt Disney Company, they did similar to what uh, the Standard Charter Bank did. A very similar process and it's very successful with keeping your employees. You gotta remember your two guiding principles, promises made and promises kept. If you make promises and you violate your employees' trust, it's going to sour their relationship and they will run from your company. Your brand, remember the four factors, brand. People will run to a brand. Everyone wants to work for a famous brand. But you have to remember your promises made and promises kept. Opportunity, provide challenging work. Stretch assignments, continual training and development and competitive pay. Purpose, game changing business model. People want to work for some company that will change the game. They say they want to put their countries on the map. As we mentioned in Uruguay, the, the people want to be proud of their country. They come from a small country, and they have a lot of tech-savvy people. They want to be put on the map. Um, re, yeah, redefining their nations, world economy, focus on mission to help unfortunate due to witnessing poverty firsthand. This was a big thing with the, the, the Standard Chartered Bank. Many of the Chinese who grew up around poverty, they see many of their, um, their friends and families 
um, just growing up in poverty. So when a company goes forth and they try to improve lives and do microfinancing, trying to bring the nation up as a whole, they're willing to give more to their company, a social contract. In the culture, feel authentic. Must believe brand promise was, is within reach. You cannot promise something when someone feels they cannot reach it. In these, vetting pro uh, in these vetting processes like orientation, when you go into a company, they'll often show you, oh, I started out at the bottom and now I'm the boss. They show you pictures of this and it makes you think, oh, I can be that man. <laughs> this isn't necessarily a promise, but it's showing, it's showing them, it's making them believe that it's within reach. Employees recognize for their individual achievements. Make sure you recognize your employees. Show them that you did a good job. Maybe separate them from the team. This will put more into the company. Okay. And lastly, let's revisit companies that overcame the shortage of talent. Levino. Leveno. I don't know how to say it. Lenovo. Lenovo. Mm -hmm. They actually restructured and became Lenovo from another Chinese company. And then they raised enough money to buy IBM. Great, right? But the thing was, is the Chinese people saw, we are big enough to buy an American company. This gave them pride. They flocked to the company with a global perspective. They thought, now we are global. We can buy an international large company. Uh, moving on to TCS, the data services company from India. Strong brand, opportunity expanded to Brazil. My opinion, the brightest thing they did is they sent their engineers first. Then, the engineers came back and reported what they saw and they picked out the salespeople. It's a backwards movement of what they normally would do. Also, AC, HCL Technologies. Vinit Nair, to me, fascinating man. I did a lot of research on him and I read a lot about him. Employees first, customers second. This made him almost a revolutionist in Indian businesses. The people there respected him. They flocked to his company. The mere fact that he would review 100, I think it was 100 customer complaints per week and respond to them himself. And those complaints couldn't be taken down from the online forum until the employees took them down themselves, feeling that they had been addressed. This changed the way that model was working and people stayed longer, they worked harder. There are facts that some employees did not even receive that high compensation. They did not move forward that fast, but there was a promise. They knew they'd work for a good company. This kept their employees. And that all comes from changing the company from a top-down management style to a bottom-up. was very common in India that the top half held most of the power. And the trust pay. This was amazing, and it just amazed most of the employees. They thought their contracts were wrong. They actually told the company what's wrong with their contract. Because in addition to basic pay, and their variable pay. There was suddenly an extra payment of trust pay. It just means, I'm going, I trust you as an employee, I trust you to stay with the company, I'm investing in you. Mm -hmm. And Standard Charter Bank, I already mentioned on them briefly. They had the gap in employees in the China's one-child policy. This is a big problem. There's a word that the press likes to use a lot, and they call them little emperors. Children don't have cousins, don't have sisters and brothers. <laughs> so if grandma raises them, aunt and uncle raise them, it's, the whole family cherishes them and works on them, sends them to college. They are often the first child in the family to go to a university and be able to um, uh, account, um, amount to something great. So they spend all of this money, fortunes, to send these kids and make them the best. So they often have never been told what to do. They often, they often get a lot of respect. So when these children enter the workforce, Sometimes they can't handle criticism. They can't handle being told what to do. And so this is what these banks, or the standard charter bank, tried to tackle this problem. And um, they did a very good job with doing it, and they got a lot of world publicity. And many, many places have now appreciated this and implemented it into their systems. And I would say that actually the most impressive thing they do is their microfinancing. The way that they work, um, they're working to bring up the whole nation as a whole, and microfinance was caught a lot of respect from the people. And I'm going to skip all that because it's been read like three times. So, mm. so that's our presentation, and thank you for listening. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, Daniel.
you really had the experience, right? Working in China and had the insight. That was interesting, yes. Of the uh, one child <laughs> situation. Thank you. Right now they changed the policy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to change. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But not for every every family. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So uh, now I just give the summary, right, of uh, these two paper, uh, these uh, papers, uh, uh, content and uh, this and uh, discussion and comment. Uh, because uh, like uh, Tom has uh, talked about this uh, background, right? You need to know the the context of the emerging market uh, uh, talent management yeah, because uh, their economy is growing uh, very fast, right? So you need to have some local talent work for you to uh, pick up uh, this uh, uh, fast uh, uh, growth of the economy and the market. Um, however, um, their local talent uh, don't have uh, much experience, right? And their skill and their profession uh, need to be developed, right? Need to be developed. So, for a company, you need to provide the, the uh, talent development process for them. Uh, and so, this is really a challenging for uh, many uh, uh, multinational company to uh, compete compete in this emerging market. So, before you want to compete. <laughs> For this uh, emerging market, uh, you need to compete for the talent, <laughs> the core talent. Okay, so how to uh, attract them, right? How to attract them? Uh, I would like to use this uh, organizational, organizational uh, attraction. Uh, attraction, right? You need to have this uh, brand, right? The brand, the leadership, inspiring leadership. Okay, so oh, so then you. Uh, can attract the people work for you in the uh, emerging market. However, after you had this uh, organic uh, attraction, you need to have a local, I would like to say the local leverage. It means that you need to, uh, 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 you need to provide the, the challenging uh, work for your local talent. Then you need to evaluate whether they can uh, uh, win, right? Can win in this uh, uh, race, right? So you need to provide the very good uh, motivation and the good uh, performance uh, evaluation, and provide the challenging work. Then you can know, you can identify who is really the local talent, which who you should develop them to become the global talent. Okay, so. Uh, if you want to let them can uh, become your company's uh, global talent, you need to have this global development process. So after the local leveraging, then you need to have the global development. Okay, so you need to have the, the mission, right? The mission, and they then know all oh, this. Is our company's uh, mission. I not uh, I not just a uh, work, uh, working. Uh, for the local market, uh, also for this the the global right the global competitiveness. So it's very important to have this global development process. Okay, don't just let them stay. Always stay stay in the the the, the subsidiary. Yeah, they sometimes they need to be uh, assigned uh, to travel uh, to visit other subsidiary, right? Even. Uh, a uh, uh, short term, a uh, short term uh, uh, training program uh, in headquarters. Okay, so this is the the global development process, and the finally, you should have a corporate, the corporate integration, right? That then can be integrated into the the company's the culture, right? Company culture. Okay, so I yeah, just give you this uh, four. Uh, it's for uh, turn first additional attraction and then the local ravaging and the global development and the, finally the corporate integration. So by means of this uh, 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 human capital management process, 
right? You can not only attract people, attract local tenant work for you, but also you can uh, retain them, right? retain this local tenant working for you, not only in emerging market, but also in uh, the global market, okay? Yeah, so I would like to uh, give send to you a group, very good uh, comment and analyze this, okay? And you group uh, really provide not only the content, but also some insight. Right? And you have very good uh, description of the background. Thank you, thank you for you two groups. And then how about five minutes and I mean break and please uh, come up to set up your second paper presentation, okay? Only five minutes.